Hello everyone and welcome back to another episode on our submarine build. In this one we're finally going to be getting the power plant put together so you'll see later on I'm going to be uh, playing around with the modular engines quite a bit and this is going to be a long-standing thing. You'll see I'm going to play around with these for quite a few episodes until I really get them to a place that I'm happy with. But yeah, so we'll uh, we'll get the basics of the, the engine in uh, into the sub and you'll kind of get to see you know, the general idea for what I'm going for here, um, you're going to see that we're going to go with a modular engine. It's a three by three and it will be outside the sub. So outside in the water and we're going to go for a pancake six setup. So early on, this will be quite simple. Um, later on, this is going to become a very, very cramped, complicated space on the uh, submarine. So, um, you know, if you see things change between videos and whatnot, like I said, there was a lot of testing that went into this. So, um, you know, a lot of things probably got tweaked a little bit behind the scenes and whatnot, but yeah, so, uh, we'll get right into the time-lapse here and, uh, yeah, we'll get this engine in the, in the sub and we'll start driving around under, uh, diesel power. But yeah, guys, if you like the videos, you like the build, don't forget to uh, leave a thumbs up and subscribe. That way I can, uh, keep making these videos for you guys and whatnot. This will eventually be on the workshop, but, uh, you know, if, if you have any things that you would like to see in the boat for now, um, you know, go ahead and throw them in the comment section and uh, I'm open to suggestions and whatnot, but yeah, we will, uh, we'll get right into it. All right. All right, guys, so I did say that we would be going a little bit more in depth just so I can explain what's going on here a little bit more for the people that might be a little less familiar with Stormworks and how it works. Um, here you see I'm adding a, a uh, pump to pump into an uh, a air tank. This is going to be used to feed uh, air to the engine, the diesel engine underwater. And this is a, a kind of a nice system because we'll get... Uh, compressed air is a byproduct from this, which is useful for other things in submersibles, such as refilling oxygen tanks and blowing the ballast and whatnot. Um, but so this is a, a pretty simple setup. You'll notice um, I had just one large pump there. It'll stay that way. I hook it up to a threshold gate with an altimeter. And as soon as the, uh, the pipe is above sea level, it will automatically start filling this tank up to 60 PSI. Once the tank is filled, it then goes out of a valve that you'll see later on. Um, originally, I use a variable flow valve, but later on, I end up making so much power with the engine that I can just switch it to a straight, just open pipe. Um, this is really to maintain the correct AFRs in the modular engine, which is nice. Um, there's a couple of different tweaks that you can do with the modular engines, make them a lot more efficient and whatnot. But uh, we do end up adding a lot more oxygen to this system just to extend the range. But I didn't, I personally didn't run into any issues with, uh, you know, running low on pressure or whatnot. Yeah, I mean, you could stay under the water for probably well over an hour with this setup. So, um, you know, it, it'll get, like I said earlier in the video, it'll got, get a lot more complicated, but this is honestly one of the most important parts of this motor is just being able to run off of compressed air. Um, and that obviously that way, it doesn't really matter if we are on the surface or underwater, the engine is just going to operate the same way regardless, which is a lot simpler in the long run, so.
Okay guys, so we will uh, hop right back into the real world. As you guys can see from the last uh, time lapse, I got pretty much the bare necessities I needed hooked up to the modular engine to get it spinning. Um, so we got it running now. And we'll kind of just see how the engine's behaving and go from there. You can uh, initially see the RPS is bobbing around a lot and we'll have to address that. That's for, that is because the exhaust is getting stuck in the engine one and the flow of oxygen isn't smooth enough. So there's a few things later on we'll do to combat that. Um, the bigger of the two issues is going to be the exhaust. If you guys decide to build your own submarine, just keep that in mind. The best way I found to get the exhaust out of the engine is using an impeller pump powered by the engine. You you got to gear it up pretty high. I think mine are later on set to one to nine. But um, if you get enough torque into these impeller pumps, they they can pump the exhaust out of the engine pretty much at any depth. So that's going to be one of the biggest issues if you go ahead and decide to build a diesel sub. Um, so just keep that in mind with your own builds and, and stuff. So. Thank you. 
All right, guys, and as you can see, these were the, the small impeller problems I was talking about. I got them uh, wound into the gearboxes. Each one of those gearboxes is at the one, two, three, so you get a one to nine gear ratio out of it to pump the exhaust out. But this uh, should hopefully fix a lot of the issues, and you can see there the RPS is uh, pretty smoothly pinned at 20, so it seemed to fix a lot of the, uh, the bobbing around issues for our RPS, which is really good. So... Um, that is at least sorted for now and we're just gonna drive the sub around again I, I, I like to end these videos usually of me kind of just You know using the vehicle a little bit uh, showing you guys the progress we made and whatnot You can see there's obviously some some stability issues that we'll have to work out and we'll take care of that in uh, some of the later episodes and whatnot, but yeah, you know, I think this is a really good start for the engine and this is a really good base for what we are building and um, Yeah, we'll, we'll kind of just keep building off of this, but I, uh, I want to just take a minute and say thank you. Uh, the, the last couple of videos have gotten a lot of great support from you guys, so thank you very much. I appreciate that. And if you want to see more, um, like I said, just hit that thumbs up button, hit the subscribe button, and I'll keep making these videos for you guys, keep making these creations for you to play with. Um, that's why I do it. I, uh, I enjoy building so you all can enjoy the creations I make. So. Thank you very much, and you know I always say this: if you do have any suggestions, uh, just let me know, and I'll be happy to uh, think about it, implement them, and whatnot. But yeah, thank you guys very much. I hope you have a great rest of your day, and uh, we'll see you in the next one.